अरे ही सर्वशक्तिमान वॉट इज द्वेश्चन अबाउट बाली स्ट्रेंथ That means what doubt is there whether this Bhagwan really whether he first is Bhagwan or he is Sarva Shakti Man or what? So Bhagwan had to demonstrate that power to him. He shot through some trees that were there also, and then with uh, with one of his big toe like that, he just threw the bones of that Dundubi. Yeah, so Krishna said, "Okay, okay." okay. And now I, now I believe human beings' frail intellect always needs some proof. Okay, I have to see. I don't see. Seeing is believing. Uh, but there are many things in this world that we have to believe that is there without seeing. Also, you have to learn that thing. But in Western world, they say no, no. Seeing only is believing. We can show you so many things that you can see, but you have to believe. By how we call it, by praman, some proof. See, like for example, I have never seen my great great grandfather. But by can you suggest by any stroke of imagination that he never existed? Can? <laughs> In daytime, when you look in the sky, you don't see any stars. Unless somebody knocks you on the head, but when, <laughs> but when you look there, you don't see any star. But can you say that they are not there? Because you don't see, they are not there. There's there are things which are beyond our senses. That is the idea. Huh? Our senses is not only the, only Brahman. There are so many things. Huh? If you see smoke in the mountain over there, you can safely conclude that. They have to be fire there. Otherwise, where the smoke is coming from? Some dragon is breathing on. There has to be even if dragon is breathing fire, then dragon also. So if you are seeing smoke, there has to be fire. One thing can can conclusively be concluded by seeing another thing. If you are here, that means you are a great great grandfather, even though you never saw him. Mm -hmm. But the human uh, frailty, intellect, intellectual frailty causes him to think all sorts of things. Mean, he doubts, 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 he doubts Bhagwan also. <laughs> One fellow is an atheist, you know, atheist. He believed that there was no God. Then, one day he was walking in some place and a tiger started chasing him. Now, when tiger starts chasing us, if tiger starts to chase us, we say, "Oh God!" He could not say, "Oh God!" Also, <laughs> <laughs> when something happens, I don't know what the atheist will say. But anyway, he ran. Hmm? So, by running, he ran and fell over a cliff. Then, while coming down, he held on to a root. Of a tree that was jutting out, and he was hanging there now. Now cliff is hundred feet below, and tiger is twenty feet above, and he is hanging on that root. Now he can't go either side. Then he doesn't believe in God also. Now what to do? So he hung there for a little while, uh, and uh, you know, how long you hang? Then he said, "Okay, okay, God, <laughs> if you are there, <laughs> I know I have not believed in you for all this time, and I also told a lot of people don't believe in you. But if you are there, please save me, and I promise, from now I will believe in you. And Bhagwan also, you know." Bole bale bale Bhagwan, there was Atusho, Asu, Ashutosh. He is, you know, he is easily pleased. At least this fellow called. So Bhagwan boom from that, a uh, boom from that. Uh, what you call that? Akalvani. I said, "Be here, be here. I'm here. I feel now you let go that root." He said, "What?" <laughs> Is there anybody else up there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not only when we believe, 
but our belief is also quickly shattered. First, we don't believe. Second, if we believe also, that belief also is quickly shattered. Yeah, the easy. Huh? But here, Bhagwan Ishwar, Paramatma, Lord of the Universe, Mariyada Pushwatam, is standing in front of Sugri, and he also is thinking, well, I wonder if he can beat this Bali. <laughs> He doubts the efficacy of Bhagavan. That type of doubt is not good for a devotee, you know. But Bhagavan also is so lovely. And Bhagavan will also still oblige and say, okay, Sugri, okay, I'll show you. To build faith in the Sugri also, Bhagavan, throw that Tundubi. Now what happens? Sugri immediately, when Bhagavan demonstrated that he is able to, he is able to remove that Bali like that easily, Sugri got a bout of Arjuna disease. Arjuna disease, you know? <laughs> Arjuna saw on that other side his own people. Huh? And when after he saw, immediately he got what they call as pseudo vairagya. <laughs> you know, immediately got pseudo vairagya. Huh? Well, he detached from everything in this world of Prabhu. I will go to Himalaya and I'll sit there and chant. Oh. <laughs> Suddenly he got vairagya. Why? Because who is on the other side? My own people. Exact same thing happened to Sukri so when he saw that Bhagavan could now remove his body easily. He suddenly got pseudo, pseudo vairagya, Prabhu. Only because of this body, I met you. Had it not been for this body chasing me and keeping me in this condition, I would not have met you. Prabhu, you leave this body. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he suddenly read the body is my own. My own brother, you know, he also exact same thing of Arjuna. He also now tells Bhagwan, you leave this Bali like that. But Bhagwan tells a very nice thing. And I want you to see this. And the one who requested the removal of Bali is now telling, leave Bali. And Bhagwan's reply to that. And see, when studying Ramayana, you see like this, eh? some serious uh, reply from Bhagwan. See this now chop by at Doha number six if you have your if you have your <laughs> This is Bhagavan's reply to that whole Sugriv request. Would you please leave that Bali? Bhagavan says, Sunu Sugriv, listen Sugriv, Mari Ahu Bali. I am certainly going to remove this Bali. I am certainly going to slay this Bali. Bhagavan, even though his request is there. And how? Ekahiban, with one arrow, I will remove him. Brahma, in Brahmaji, Rudra, Saranagata, even if he takes refuge in Brahmaji, he takes refuge in Lord Shiva. Gaye na ubarahipra, none of them will be able to save him. I need to say what now? See, that means to say, Bhagwan's removal of Bali 
is not really because of a request by Sugri, isn't it? Because the same person who requested it is telling, okay, now leave it. That means Bhagwan already decided that the Bali has to be removed. You see? Now see, first thing. If Ishwara, Sarva Shaktiman Ishwara, Sarvagnya Ishwara, who knows everything, if he has decided to remove Bali, then what is your problem? Why everybody going on, go on asking, well, why do I have to remove this Bali? Or why you have to shoot him? And if, if he has already decided, I'll shoot him, I'll remove him. Well, shoot him from front, back, side, anywhere. Well, what is the difference? <laughs> that question I, I should not ask at all come, isn't it? See, when the state, that this is an ordinary thing here in state also. When the state has decided that you have to receive capital punishment, you cannot tell, sir, I want to die on Sunday. Or I should be facing the wall when I, I should be facing this side or that side or what? Once the state has passed the sentence of capital punishment, you cannot go and tell him. If the state is gracious, they may give you, okay, you want to get a gas chamber, you want the electric chair, or you, you want what you want, right? They may give. There's many states that don't. Don't give. Once the death sentence is passed, that person has no more rights, isn't it? He doesn't even have right to life. What to talk about any other right? So if Bhagavan has already decided that this Bali is going to go, then no question should come in our mind. This is Bhagavan decision. Huh? Bhagavan only decided we'll face Sukha and Dukha and everything in this world. He's Ishwara. But people say, no, 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 Swamiji. But there's still some rules which he broke, you know. He's Kshatriya. <laughs> Kshatriya. And he, um, he lived from behind and all of that. You know, yet, if he's real Kshatriya, he should come from the front and kill him. Now let us see this slaying of this Bali, uh, because this is now decision. Whether he runs for refuge by Brahmaji, he runs for refuge by Lord Shiva, wherever he runs for refuge, I'm going to remove. But it sounds heartless. And what it also tells in, in Hindu Shastras, Hindu Shastras actually, really and truly, Hindu Shastras also have capital punishment. Right here we are seeing. Even when somebody requests, I will probably use even pardon him. But one also decides. It is the harsh realities of life. In Uttarakhand, Tulsi Daji writes that Bhagwan has to be as harsh as a thunderbolt. And Bhagwan also be, has to be as soft as a flower. If we learn this one thing, everything will be fine in our life, actually. We have to and have a perfect balance of both. What happens is we, we become too soft like a flower and we forget the thunderbolt thing. And then we simple thing, like because we spoil our children because we are too soft. And then the other people, too harsh. Kali Sahari says, you have to be like a potter. The pot is spinning on that wheel. And he, he's giving some tapping from outside. But on the inside, he's supporting with one hand. And he's... These are all the simple things of life, actually. We cannot be all the harsh on this side. And we cannot be all the soft on this side. One side it. A nice... Balance is required. Huh? So, what has happened to us over long millennia and all of that? Long millennia of we became too soft. Whole nation, whole civilization. So then others just came and he walked over us. So both have to be there. So here it appears. No, this episode, Malcolm's harsh. 
already decided I'm going to remove this. Balance. See, our, our teaching is about balance only. We never teach about one side in this in every, anything. Sukha dukhe sabhe kritva lava lava. Jaya, you know. Balance is there. Samatvam yoga uchate. Balance in everything, really. Samabuddhir vishishyate. How many quotes you think? Old Gita Bhagavan is teaching this thing. Balance in all aspects of life. And that is demonstrated by Bhagavan Ram. We say, yes, he is Karunani Than Prabhu Ram. But Karunani Than Prabhu Ram doesn't mean that he will not remove Bali. Doesn't mean he will not remove Ravan. Doesn't mean he will not remove all his Rakshasas. He raises his arms in, in uh, Aranya Khan. I'm going to free this earth from all Rakshasas. Mm -hmm. Karunani Than. <laughs> That also is an expression of karuna, because what you have karuna for all these sadhus and saints, the mahatmas, everybody, all people who are being subjected to the atrocities of these people. So the karuna has to express like this also. I have to remove these uh, um, people who are causing all of this pain and sorrow. Uh, and uh, don't uh, misinterpret karuna. So he tells, no, even if he takes refuge in Brahmaji or Shiva, I am going to. But they also cannot save you. What a strong state, actually. And then he tells, after that, some long, not long, some portion on friendship. You can go and see. Eh? You go and see that whole. Thing on friendship and all that, and now he tells. I'll tell you, we'll start from just before number seven. Oh, let us say after six. Yeah, there's so many children. nice shop are there. Laisu Bhiva Sang Raguna Tha Bali had to be removed and everything. So Sugri comes there. When they go there now, Bhagavan tells, okay, now you go and challenge him to fight. Sugri said, what? <laughs> <laughs> he was not expecting that. He was expecting Bhagavan to just go there and remove that. <laughs> Bali. Now he tells the Sugri, you go there and fight him. <laughs> While you are fighting him, I will I will shoot him. Ah, you go and challenge him. 
इलाई सुग्रीव संग रघुनाथ था भगवान लेफ्ट चले चार पैसा एक दही हाँ था भगवान लेफ्ट इज बोर्न आरो सुग्रीव इज थिंकिंग नहीं नो ही इज टेकिंग ऑफ इज बोर्न आरो सो ही विल रिमूव द बाली बट दैट डिड नॉट डिड नॉट हैव टू टेक रघुपति सुग्रीव पर था वा मीन्स ही थिंक थिंक गो ऑन चैलेंज दैट एंड सुग्रीव बिकेम डाउटफुल आल्सो व्हेदर व्हाट यू डिड नॉट टेल मी दिस इज पार्ट ऑफ द बार्गेन आल्सो एनीवे सुग्रीव आल्सो बाय दैट टाइम हैड डेवलप्ड सम श्रद्धा इन भगवान राम जब ठीक है भगवान सेस टू गो देन आई गो एनी प्रॉमिस आल्सो व्हाट व्हेन बाली कम्स आउट आई विल Sugriv goes there and he challenges that Bali. So not the Bali, and Bali was one of those people. He could not resist a challenge. So not the Bali, Krodha Turadhawa. With anger, he rushed out of that uh, palace, come, come, coming out there. Because what? Sugriv has decided to die. So uh, finally. Because if Sugriv has come to challenge me, that means finally he has decided to die, like that, huh? And he, how dare he come and challenge me? Mean, Sugriv, Bali rushed out there. Gahi kara chala na na. So she does that very nicely. Tara, the wife of that Bali, she quickly fell on the feet of that Bali. No, no, don't go. You should not go. Hmm? Sunupati. जिन्हेंट <laughs> 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 So grief has been running away from you all these years, and suddenly he comes to challenge you. So you don't think that something is amiss? But Bali had too much of. Do you see that is called Mahabhimani? Mahabhimani means too much of Abhiman. He will not listen to Tara also, even though she is telling the correct thing. The lesson in that is. All men should listen to their wives. <laughs> so anyway, he he did not listen. She told him, "Go, Sally, Sasuta, Lachi, Mandra, Rama." They are the yes, the words are there. They are the sons of Dashiratji Maharaj, Lachi, Mandra, Rama. Kal Ujiti, Sakahi, Sakya Rama. They can defeat the death time itself on the battlefield. And you are going. Hmm. No, Bali replied. Kah Kah Bali, Sunu Viru, Priya, Tama Darasi Raghunatha, Lord Raghunatha. Listen, my dear. If he is Ram, he is Sama Darshi. Sama Darshi means he will see everybody equally. He will see me equally and see Sukriv equally. That is wrong interpretation. Just now I told you. When Ram has to be like a Thunderbolt is like a thunderbolt. That is not the meaning of samadarshi. You see what happens to us. The bhakti gets too much of bhakti gets to our head, and that bhakti causes us to wrongly interpret scriptures. In the scriptures, Bhagwan is described as samadarshi. He sees all as equal, right? If Bhagwan sees all as equal, Bhagwan. Uh, leaves Ayodhya. His Guru Vasishta Maharaj is there, and Bhagwan leaves Ayodhya, and he goes to Lanka, and Ravan is there. Guru Vasishta is here, and Ravan is there. If he sees all as equal, that means Guru Vasishta and Ravan is one and same. Then why he will remove Ravan? So that means that is not the meaning of Samadarshi, isn't it? The meaning of Samadarshi is. Bhagwan sees all as equal. When we say those words, right? Bhagwan sees all as equal. It means to say, and he explains in Bhakti language. The explanation for this is, anybody who comes and surrenders to Ram Bhagwan Ram, anybody who comes and supplicates and surrenders takes refuge in Ram. It doesn't matter if it is Ravan 
or it doesn't matter if it is a Santa Mahatma, Bhagwan will treat both of them the same. That is the idea. The treatment will be exactly the same. In fact, he gave Ravan that option till the end. That is not the, the, the meaning that, oh, he's Samadarshi, and so he'll treat Ravan uh, just as he'll treat Vasishta Maharaj. Oh, Ravan, I come to prostrate to you. So that Samadarshi was seeing equal, all as equal. Don't misinterpret that to mean like this. So Bali is misinterpreting that. In other words, before Ram, he will see me equal to you. He's telling his Tara, he'll see me equal to Sukhriv. And so he say, if he's Samadarshi, I say, because of his wrong interpretation. And what happened? Because of Tulsi Raji's explanation, Abhiman. Abhiman causes us to make all of these wrong interpretation. When somebody interprets the Shastra all by himself. I don't need this guru. I don't need that one. I don't need the other one. I will read and I will do it my, myself. That is Abhiman only. That's why we chanted in the beginning. Guru Binu Bhavanidhi Tarai Nakoi. Nobody can cross. We need, this tradition needs a guru. And the next line, Jaubi Rachi Sankar Samhoi. Even if he be the equal of Brahmaji, Lord Shiva, Bhagavan Krishna, Rama had guru. Everybody. So we need, when we, when the Abhiman is there, we think that we can interpret the Shastras by our self. That will cause trouble. He is misinterpreting the meaning of Samadarshi, where Bhagavan sees everybody as equal. If you interpret in this way, then Bhagwan, there will be no punishment of anybody. There will be no removal of Ravan. There will be no removal of all of the Rakshasas who are causing so much of trouble and all of that. So that means that is not the interpretation. Bhagwan is Samadarshi. He will see me and Sugrivas equal. Jau kadapi mui marahi tau puni hoi sana. This line is, this is actually the line, second line. Why Bali uh, actually died with Darshan of Ram? Because the second line says, and this is a very nice thing. If he is Ram and if he kills me, then I will die Sanat. I will die seeing the Lord. Uh, so I will be fortunate also. Like that he goes and now. Asakari chala maha abhimani. This is like maha abhimani. He goes like great, so much of ego. Trina uh, samana sugriva hi jani. Thinking sugriva to be no more than a blade of grass. It means the underestimation of sugriva. And the idea is anybody who has Bhagwan on his side. We should not think he is a mere blade of grass. Mm. That is why I see in Mahabharat on Kaurava's side, there are 11 Akshavinis. On Pandava's, Pandava's side, only 7 Akshavinis. So they are outnumbered. Pandavas are outnumbered 11 to 7. Mm. So Kauravas are feeling great. We outnumber them, you know, 11 to 7. That means they are all discounting the presence of Bhagwan. Krishna on this side, you see. So who has the Lord on their side? We should not think slightly of them. So like that, <laughs> he goes thinking so great to be only a player of grass. Huh? Wow, Bali, Ati Tarja, Mutika, Mai, Mahat, Nika, and he rushed out of the palace now and started raining blows on that Subri. After leaving that Tara, rushed out and started beating that Subri like anything. Now that Subri also, he thinking, and Bhagavan Ram promised you, know, he's getting blows. And he's thinking, now Bhagavan will shoot him. Now Bhagavan will shoot him. Now Bhagavan will shoot him. And Bhagavan is not shooting and this fellow is beating him. <laughs> and Bhagavan is not shooting. Hmm. That was so grieved. 
बिकल हो भागा आफ्टर गेटिंग सो मच ब्लोज एंड भगवान डी नॉट शूट दैट सुग्री बोल्ट विद द लास्ट लिटिल बिट ऑफ स्ट्रेंथ लेफ्ट इन हिज बॉडी ही रन अवे बैक फ्रॉम देयर टू भगवान राम मुष्टि प्रहार वज्र सम लागा मैं देन ही टोल प्रभु व्हाट इज दिस यू सेट मी अप you told me to go there when so when so grief come bali comes out you will should he almost kill me no actually his head is good in valmiki ramay he got such a beating he was hospitalized for 6 months <laughs> this is here bhagwan ram just passed his hand on, on this uh, so grief and then he was okay hmm? How, how can you do this to me, Prabhu? So Bhagwan's explanation: एक रूप तुम ब्राता तो तेरी प्रमते नहीं मारी हूँ. So you look exactly like that Bali. When Bali came out and both of you started fighting, I could not tell who is Bali and who is so great. I may have shot you also. Now see you tell. Bhagwan is Sarvatnya. Hmm. I just told you now, Bhagwan Sarvat Nya. He knows everything. How he cannot distinguish between Bali and Sugri? Or this question will arise, na? You cannot distinguish between two brothers. If you are Sarvat Nya Ishwara, how you cannot distinguish? Like that. So he tells, he passes hands like that. He tells uh, Sugri. No, you take this mala. You took a mala and put it on the sukri. <laughs> Now you go back and fight. He said, "What again? <laughs> <laughs> What you want? This? You want Bali to finish the job? <laughs> no, no sukri. Now you have this mala, so that I will be able to distinguish who is sukri and who is Bali. So you go and fight. So reluctantly now." So grief when he started to go, and he's looking back at Ram, <laughs> and he's looking forward there, and looking back, he's looking. He's going there, and Bhagwan Ram on this side. I hope Bali is not also wearing mala. <laughs> I doubt now. Bhagwan has doubt here, and he has doubt there. Anyway, that so grief goes there, and he again calls out, again Tara tell, hey, don't go. Tell to that Bali again that Bali goes out. You all know that story already. Yeah? Again he goes out and bahu chal bal sugriv kara. This is now scene number eight. He's fighting with Bali second time. <laughs> Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram. Bal Sugriv Kara. He tried every which way to defeat this Bali. By Chal Bal, every Chal Bal means DC power, strength, raw strength, anything. He tried to overcome this Bali. He had hard up, he mani, but eventually he gave up. He said, "No, I can't do it. This Bali will not kill me." And the one was sitting also. <laughs> <laughs> But the, the, the operative word is he a hara bhaymani when he accepted defeat. Hmm. He says that 
मारा राम काली तब राम released that fatal arrow and struck that body. In other words, in Bhakti Marg, once the devotee thinks that he could do it himself, then Bhagavan does not think, if you think you can do it yourself, then? No. <laughs> Bhagavan is like that. Huh? One day Bhagavan Vishnu rushed out from the Taikunt. Lakshmi Ji, where are you going with us? <laughs> No, oh, no, no, somebody is chasing my devotee. They, they want to kill him. They're chasing with a sword. I'm going to save my devotee. In two minutes, Bhagavan Vishnu returned. What? So quickly? You saved your devotee? What happened? How did you return so quickly? No, no, when I got there, I saw that devotee, he also took up a big boulder and he's throwing it at that fellow, you know. So if he could do it himself, then I can. I have nothing to do there. Then no work for me. <laughs> so when that devotee thinks, well, I can do it myself. I don't need this Bhagavan. I don't need this guru. I don't need that one. And he left on his on his own. But yeah, and said he was fighting both Chalapala, everything. He was trying to re remove that Bali. So but when he haram by money, he haram money means and now I give up. I think I can't. Do it and total surrender is required. Bhagwan released that arrow and Hridaya Maj Sarattani struck Bali in the heart. Paradi Kalamahi Sarke Lage Puni Utibe Zeki Prabhu Ari. Bali was so powerful. Bali is Indra Vatar. Bali is Indra Vatar. He was so powerful. He received the blow of Bhagwan's arrow in his heart. And Bali still got up and sat up. <laughs> you know, Bali is one of the two individuals in the Ram Charita Mahaja Ramayana who had defeated Ravan in the past. He was so powerful. Ravan like, was like a firefly for him, like nothing. Once he kept Ravan under his arm like this for six months. <laughs> <laughs> This is how powerful Bali was. So, if, even with the blow of Bhagwan's arrow, Bali still sat up and looked at Bhagwan Ram alive. This is the powerful Bali. So then now lots of questions will arise after we see this whole this thing. And all of it is very symbolic and very instructive. Eh? We should also not Think it's just story. I'm telling in a humorous way, and we are laughing and all of that. So that's good also. That is one part of the whole thing. But I told you, Sugriv was uh, covered, covered actually. Sugriv, Sugriv was the embodiment of cowardice. When we run away from situations, run away from things, run away from life, run away from whatever is in front of us, we have to stay, look at it, observe decide how we are going to respond to it. And this is life. Life is always like that. Huh? How are we going to respond to this? It is true that change is there, that it is good to run away sometimes so that we may fight another day. Something is that like that, that you heard. Huh? But every day to run away, that thing is not problem. But that is what Sugri was doing. So now, when we run away from challenges and things in life like that, what happens is, someday we are going to have to face that challenge. When we run away now, someday we'll have to face that same challenge again. But, but by that time, the challenge would have become twice as strong and I would have become half as strong, yes. It means my strength would have gone down and that thing would have grown stronger. And that is actually... So the idea is that's why Bhagavan had to send him now two times. Circumstances had it in such a way that he had to go and face Bali, get a beating. The same Bali he was running away from all his all his life. And the circumstances are such now that Bhagavan, in other words, Bhagavan, Bhagavan is letting him know because Bhagavan can easily distinguish who is Bali and who is Supreme. But he's playing total human role. Stay out of it. Wednesday. He doesn't does not bring his Ishwara to inside of there. From an ordinary standpoint, really, you can't tell Sugriva 
Bali. So he has to face Bali, get a beating, come back again, go on, same Bali who is petrified with. Go and face him again, get another beating. Mm. Until he also learns from all of his beating that we get from Sansar, from all things, he surrendered to Bhagwan totally. This is the eventual gati of any devotee. He doesn't learn this. My eventual surrender to Bhagwan. Because Sansar is there to beat us only. What, you, what else you get? Did you see that? Okay. Let me tell you how Sansar is structured. In Sansar, there are joys and there are sorrows. Huh? So the joys bring desserts and the sorrows bring beating. With, with this is a beating only. Isn't it? All the beatings bring sorrow. And on this side, we enjoy some things. Now you think. Any joy in Sansa, how long it will last? Suppose you like laddu. Hmm. So you eat one laddu, you get joy. Yeah. Then you eat two laddu. Two laddus, you get some more joy. By the fifth laddu, what happens? <laughs> the same thing about joy start changing into sorrow, isn't it? Joy is in the world, they last two, three minutes, five minutes. Let's be generous and say five minutes. Yesterday we were talking about, last night we were talking about somebody went zip lining. Most zip lines in the world are 10, 15 seconds. 20 seconds. That fellow was telling that zip line was three minutes. That was incredible. Three, four minutes. But joys are like that. All roller coaster rides. Two, three minutes. After that, they will find, find out what you had for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they don't take you for that long. That thing, you know. So the joys in life. You just see, you can't really enjoy anything for that long length of time. It will get boring, it will get uh, upsetting, it will, all joys are like that. But see now, pain, sorrow, you know, uh, knee pain, arthritis, how long it can last? See? <laughs> Any joy, jalebi, you can't eat more than two. Any sorrow? We go with that sorrow in front of Yamraj also. <laughs> this is Sansar or not? This is Sansar. So the Sansar is structured like this. So in other words, Sansar is designed more to give us beating, more than give us desserts. That is true thing. It is designed like that. Hmm? And with the, with that, all that beating in Kansa, I tell you, let me tell you this thing. Huh? A human being, if you have a, if you, some donkey is eating your fence, so you take a stick and you give one stick to that donkey, he'll run away. Next day, he comes by that, that way. And from your porch, you only show the stick. The donkey will not. You come, isn't it? And anytime that donkey comes in the future and you show that stick, he's gone. But a human being, he comes in the sunset and he gets blows after blows after blows. And then he dies and again he comes back. Blows after blows after blows. Punarapi Janana. So between that donkey and a human being, who's smarter? <laughs> that goes on giving blows, 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 and we come for more blows. That is an amazing thing. So I see he got blows after blows after then he thought, okay, you know. That time Bhagwan removed all his sunshine. His body was in the center of it. So when removed, and now that body, so the idea is we should not run away. We stand up and we face that thing because that thing is meant to polish us or whatever we have 
encountering in life is like that. It is a rough thing that is meant to polish us and make us worthy of mukti, make us worthy of enlightenment and all of that. Sometimes we may not um, like it, but we have to. Yeah, basically that. And when we don't, later on it will become more strong. Or two times you have to go and fight the same fellow. Uh -huh. See how nicely all these stories are put together so well. Pretty simple. Huh? Now the dialogue between Bhagavan Ram and Bali starts. Because Bali is still alive, even though, I mean, so powerful he is. Huh? Bali asked now, this is just after number eight, you see this. So see that she described nicely. In his heart, he had love. For uh, Bali. But Mukhubachana Kathora, in his from his lips came coarse words, harsh words. Huh? And these are the words now. Next. Bali, thank you, Ram. 
you come here, you say everywhere, Gita everywhere. Dharma samsthapana, arthaya sambhavami, yuge, yuge. I come age after age to establish dharma. So dharma hetu avatarehu means you take avatar to protect dharma. Then mari mori vyadiki nani, you shot me like a hunter. Which is it? So see that she doesn't write from behind and all that. But this is the story, isn't it? You shot me like a hunter means the hunter surreptitiously, stealthily hides and shoots that animal. So he just puts hunter. You shot me like a hunter. I mean, you did not come in front and you challenge me or like that. This is the first question. Your avatar and all, you came to protect dharma. Or you could transgress dharma. Second question. May dairy a buzz agree with Piara? See, we have a family feud here going on, me and Sugri. How you came in that? This is a family thing. Is it? Everybody says, don't get into family business, isn't it? So, and now you can, not only that, between two of us, we have brothers, did that, and you make enmity with me and friendship with Sugri. How? On what basis? The questions are all sound, sound. They appear sound. Hmm? And finally, this is a typical thing about a person who has done something wrong. Eh? What have I done wrong? Bali is asking Bhagwan, what wrong thing have I done? And this is all in one chapai. And Bhagwan replies immediately in the next chapai. Hmm? He tells, Anucha Badhu Bhagini Sutanari. Sunu, Satha, and Bhagavan, in his first reply, first line, you foolish? Satha, he calls it. These four, Anujabadhu, your younger brother's wife, Agini, your sister, and Sutanari, your son's wife, and your daughter, they are all one and same. So what had happened? Bali had taken over, taken the wife of this Sugri. So in, in other words, he in his mind, he had not done, done nothing wrong. But he, every society has its own laws and its own rules in, in its own time. Rules may change later. I'm like, right, at some time, you could not smoke marijuana. <laughs> No, you could go and open a joint account. <laughs> anyway, so every time in every period in history and all of that, they have their adapted that period. <laughs> that sounds funny, but society changes over time and the laws and rules and everything change, right? So the law, the rule of this time, that it is a capital crime if you take away, if you take any one of these as your wife, the four which, is, which I mentioned, that was the crime. Hmm? And Bhagavan tells very clearly, that is the law of the time. They're living in a different period, and that is the law. Hmm? In a kudrishti, the law, even not only that, take them away, the law was more uh, strict. Even to look at them with a bad eye. That was the law. See? So he tells. And then, that's the first thing. And, and so Bali feels, I have done nothing wrong. And again, first he calls him Sat. Foolish. Now, Mura. Bhagavan is calling to Bali. Eh? Mura. So he ati saya Mura foolish. You're, you're so extremely uh, proud of yourself that whatever you think you know is right, that only is right. Tara told you. Bhagavan brings this up. Tara told you that Sugriv has made an alliance with me and Lakshmana. She even used our names, which we saw just now. But no, you did not want to. 
মমা বোঝা ভালো আসে জানি ইউ নিউ ফলোয়ানি rules with regard to that person again isn't it whatever rules we have to follow with an ordinary citizen he has all his rights so we have to follow rules but for a person who has lost all his rights it is only by courtesy we do certain things but all rights have and like i said once the right of life has gone all rights have gone second thing so this is just one one thing huh? look here <clears throat> you know there are many ways to explain why one just shot bali like that this is one this is from a judicial jurisprudence standpoint i'm telling you about rights and all that once you've lost your life the right to life you've lost all rights other thing is this bali he had a boon that anybody who come the puranic explanation now anybody who comes in front of bali to fight that person at a bali will get half of that person's strength mm-hmm. eh? who comes face to face bali boon now bhagwan is sarva vyapi sarva shakti man is all powerful means of infinite power so if he comes in front of bali to fight then bali gets half of infinite how much is half of infinite infinite <laughs> infinite isn't it then the removal of bali becomes impossible because infinite fighting infinite and bali has to be removed so the removal becomes impossible see this is poor and now other thing see from the whole big cosmic uh, standpoint you just see what happened the earth is overburdened with the atrocities of rahul and the devatas and mother earth and everybody they go there earth goes as a cow they all go to bhagwan and tell prabhu we can't bear this rahul anymore you please you do something and stood in all this thing and you all know this one and bhagwan okay yes i will come and i will remove this rahu brahma ji tells all the devas all the other land like that there brahma ji tells okay now all of you take home monkeys and you go there and help bhagwan sri ram to remove this rahu this is a command from brahma ji all the other this the bow to brahma ji yes we will all go bali comes here now indra comes as bali that devta comes as bali surya bhagwan comes as subri So now their duty is what only one duty to help to remove this ravan where this bali came and is involved in all worldly material enjoyment then at one time he conquered this ravan also i told you i kept it many times actually more than one time mm-hmm. and ravan with his shrewd astute political mind the rahul grant for brahma ji very intellectually very astute it is an astute political acumen he comes and he engages bali in an alliance and bali falls for it i will not come to lanka and bother you 
you don't come to Kishkinda and bother me. In other words, you make an alliance with the enemy whom you came here to help Bhagwan remove. But that was your, you, they only came with one purpose, the gods were not coming. None of the devtas were coming. Brahmaji command, they all came. So only one purpose is there. And for the one purpose which you came, you totally forgot also. So in other words, and in, in our uh, scriptures, it is says, Pramado Vaimrityu. Pramad itself is death. Pramad means when I fall from my true purpose in life. This is what I mean of Pramad. means whatever I am supposed to do in that life, I fall from that thing. I cannot fulfill that. Then that person is as good as dead. So Bali came here for one reason, and that one reason also he could not fulfill. He became friends with Rao and an ally, an ally of Rao. And that means he totally forgot his purpose. And if we have forgotten our purpose, we are as good as death. In other words, Bhagwan was not killing Bali. He was just helping him to close his eyes because he already is dead. We could, should not be dead to our purpose. And, and the Jiva's purpose really is Mukti. Hmm? Jiva's purpose is mukti. So if we are dead to that purpose, we are as good as death. Kavi Sahib had taken his bath in Ganga and he was coming like this. So some people were going with a dead body for cremation by Ganga. So when he is coming, they are going. So they're chanting Ram Nam Satya Hai, Ram Nam Satya Hai, Ram Nam Satya Hai. And so Kavi is coming. So Kavi is I've asked him, hey, why are you all chanting Ram Nam? They said, well, Baba, ye jo humare vichidar hai, vichara mar gaya. Our relative has died, so we're chanting Ram Nam. Oh. Then Kavi said, so why is he not chanting? Because he is dead. He is dead. How will he chant? Oh, Kavi Sahib understood immediately. Those who are not chanting Ram Nam, they are <laughs> dead only. So we can be alive but be also dead. Jo Ram and Nam and Nahi Gate, O Jite Ji Marjate. So, though his eyes were open, he's dead to his purpose. And so he's good as dead only. Bhagavan helped him to close his eyes. In the end, Bhagavan also tells, he surrenders, and Bhagavan also tells, well, I can see that as I was telling. He gives everybody an equal chance. Anybody who surrenders, Bali surrenders. But one day I can save you now. But he's also very smart. After all, he's Indra Vatar, you know. He said, no, Prabhu, if I'm dying seeing you, why should I want to live here? I'm seeing you and dying. Why should I want to live in this Santa? And he, he goes. So this is Bali's, Bali's but. In the Ram Charitamana. No. <clears throat> After that, Bali is gone. Now Tara, the wife, you know what happens. Tara started lamenting profusely, and everybody started in that kitchen running helter skelter everywhere. Chaos. Chaos reigned. The king is there. So now, We'll see this tomorrow. We'll pick up the chaos tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But now we'll have again short. So, or oh, RT first. RT first. Okay. Then we'll stand for the RT and then we'll have, we'll stay back for a few minutes. Huh?
that he had come from Bhagwan Ram. Because Ravan prior to that had caused, had done a lot of deceptive things, you know. So Manji also had to prove, okay, I have come from Ram genuinely. And that time, Anumanji referred to Bhagwan Ram as Karunani Khan. A name which only Sita Ji had known, had called before. Then she realized he has come from Ram only. So he has a bhajan on Karuna Nithana Ram. Karuna Nithana Prabhu Shri Ram.
that is a most wonderful meeting bhagwan shri ram and hanuman ji is meeting and i told you that say if you say um, bhagwan meeting bhakta or bhakta meeting bhagwan both are just as good because bhagwan is always ready to meet bhakta he is always he is always eager to meet a, a bhakta hmm? and bhakta is always eager to meet bhagwan so if as i you say it is good right and we followed this story of hanuman ji meeting bhagwan ram taking him to sugri when they make an alliance and all of that and in that alliance the agreement was bhagwan ram will remove his bali and then sugri said prabhu leave him alone it's okay bhagwan said already i told i gave my word i cannot leave you leave and i am not removing bali because you told to remove bali i am removing bali because bali has to be removed like that so you know when removed that bali and then the wife of that bali tara you know we have this uh five six women in shastra who are considered to be very wise the tara is one of them alya tara mandodari tyadi yeah so tara is one of them very she was very wise hmm? there were there two types of people those who are wise and those who are otherwise <laughs> she, was, she was very wise at tara but now see sometimes even though we may have all of this knowledge we have all of this uh, you know studied so many scriptures and practice so many things sometimes when something comes to us in life all of the knowledge like we say i knew everything i studied everything but it didn't help when that sorrow came it didn't help anything happened i see that even to tara is considered to be so wise and all that now see the response this is after number 10 after number 10 doha Tara's response when Bhagwan removed that bali. Huh? See this thing. Ram bali nijatha phalava. Shri Ram jaya Ram jaya jaya Ram. Nagar log sab bhya tulatha. Rama sent Bali to a Nijatham. That also meaning has two meanings. Nijatham means Rama sent Bali to his own abode, Sakhiyatlo. Nijatham. Or he sent Bali to Nijatham means Bali is abode. He is Indra. That I told you, na? Bali is Indra. That's why he sent him back. And why you came here? You are doing nothing, Bella. <laughs> Not only that, you are foiling the plan also. Hmm. You came here for a specific reason, and you are not doing what you are supposed to do. And then, where are you? In Goa. So, Nijadam could be Bali's dam, which is Indra Lok, or Saket Lok. Nijadam is Rama's dam, but he sent it. Either or, whatever it is. Just take it. Then, Nagar Lok, sab byakul thava. Means all the people of the city, you know, they run helter skelter in consternation and, and agitated, disturbed, and not knowing what to do, confused. 
actually this all line when we read every line see to see that she's pen will not write something that has, has no purpose isn't it some purpose will be there for writing he tells now all the people started running helter skelter what the king died so the king dies everybody start running helter skelter confused not knowing what to do what is the next step like that confusion reigned. i don't see Every, nobody expected that Bali will die. Huh? Because Bali was the most powerful person of his time. You know, nobody, so everybody thought, oh, our king, he is oh, Balwan. Eh? He is powerful, and he will not die. But in this world, Hiranyakashipu thought he will never die. Huh? He will not die inside, no outside, up, no down, no man, no animal. In the daytime, no nighttime. No, he think I am invincible. But we have to learn something about this Sansar and this Jagat in which we live. We have to always be ready to expect the unexpected one thing. And anything that we think is impossible, Bhagavan will make it possible. That is Bhagavan. So, Bhagavan found out the way to remove Hinayakashiku also, an invincible Bali also. Find the way to remove it easily. So, a human being, ordinary beings like us, see, we should not think, oh, this thing will not happen. But that in this world, it is so unpredictable, anything can happen. Correct or not? <coughs> Dinosaurs did not see meteorite coming. And in this world, there are so many countries now with nuclear arms. You don't know which crazy person anytime can just touch one button. <laughs> Correct or not? In other words, you understand the sansar for what it is. It means anything is possible anytime. And we should not be surprised. And don't let the sansar take us by surprise. Otherwise, what happened? We're totally oblivious of what is going on in this world. And then something suddenly comes. And then you don't know how to? Yes, uh, respond to that thing. So he said, no, anything can happen. Anytime. Be, be prepared. Anything like that. So they were not prepared. So they said, the Akul Taware run, run everywhere, confused, Elta Skelta, not going, know what to do. <laughs> we should always have plan B in our mind. Hmm? Plan B, go back to basics. But anyway, they ran. But but no, that is not the story. I just told you. See that is line. Every line will have some. Nara bithi bilap karatara. This is the line. Tara wept profusely in so many ways. And to see that she was, is very funny. Nara bithi means she wept. Tara, his wife, wept and lamented in so many various ways, and following all the rules of weeping also. As though there are rules for weeping. <laughs> Two day kings. And if you are weeping, you cannot be nicely decorated and doing <laughs> Her hair was all <laughs> flying everywhere. Not ah. some bhara. And she is not a body also lost. To me. You can't stand at attention and cry. <laughs> standing very nicely and neatly they are well decorated and hair and everything and then you're crying let it let the appearance also match the reality you know she wept in many ways the, the line also so to see that is funny eh? see if you read when you read he is very very funny actually there are many places Bhagavan Sri Krishna also Many places throw such funny things he tells, but you have to be in that, then you'll understand. In in sixth chapter, Bhagavan Sri Krishna is telling how to meditate. Have you seen? Samam Kaya Shiva Grivam. He tells you, you sit straight in that. Huh? Some Prasha Nasika Gram Swam. Then you bring your attention and concentrate on the tip of your nose. He's explaining in sixth chapter. It's so funny. He, he, after telling 
नासिका ग्राम तिपटी नोज नासिका ग्राम आणि इन लास्ट वर्ड स्वाम युअर ओन टिप ऑफ युअर नोज नॉट टू मेरिटेर सम अदर पर्सन नोज ऑपॉर्चुनिटी लाफ Which is you cannot if you go home and see your dog laughing. Mm-hmm. Oh, you will come back here only. <laughs> so we get that opportunity. Now see, to see that also where he has to describe. Tara wept in various ways. He is describing the weeping also. Now she let her hair all go down and body unconscious of body also and crying. In various ways. See, vidhi word is used. Vidhi word is used for this all. Uh, what you call uh, when we are doing puja? It's called puja vidhi. Have you heard? Puja vidhi. Oh, okay. that type of ritual. They all have method. Ah, huh? vidhi means method. So it's method of crying. Jaras don't cry like that. You cry heartily, also, and you have to cry or laugh. Yes. Anyway, that is that is not the point. Also, Tara and now Bhagwan saw Tara crying, and I told you the same Tara is the same wise Tara, but now Tara is also overwhelmed by the situation. So the wisdom doesn't seem to help when catastrophe or disaster or dire circumstances pounds on us, isn't it? So now see Bhagwan's re- uh, response. Mm-hmm. Next line. <laughs> श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम confusion is so miserable seeing tara's broken heart deen hi gyan bhagwan gave to her knowledge and actually see this is bhakti granth you know people consider ram charit manas to be bhakti granth isn't it but really 
If you look in the lines of Raham Jarit Manav, you'll see Nyan featuring very prominently. And there are certain things Bhakti can remove, but there are certain things only Nyan can remove. Now see, just what Bhagavan gave to Tara? Nyan. Dini, Nyan. Dini were two Tidas, yeah? Now, what was Tara's condition? Dukkha. Dukkha is the thing which no jiva likes. We don't like dukkha. Who likes? And then that means what? The solution for dukkha is jnana only. Hmm? That is why we were, we were telling, uh, I was telling that in Bhakti Marg, the devotee's mind swings from sukha to dukkha. Sukha to dukkha, like this, back and forth in Bhakti Marg. You see all the Bhakta there. When my Ram will come. How oh, Ram Krishna Paramahamsa used to roll and in these modern times. He used to roll in the sand. Devi Ma, when will you give me darshan? Hmm? Miserable. Cry. So Bhakti Man has this dukkha, sukha dukkha, sukha dukkha all the time. Only difference from our sukha dukkha is their sukha and dukkha is for Bhagavan. Uh, our sukha and dukkha is for all little things, you know. Everybody got pani. <laughs> I got no pani. Mm. Yeah, dukkha. See, he, he passed and gave to everybody and then he saw me. He turned and he didn't give me. <laughs> Ball dukkha. Mm. For little things. That has nothing to do with Bhagwan. But the bhakta sukha and dukkha is related to Bhagwan. That type of dukkha is... In there, it was Mama Guna Gavat Pulaka Sarira Gadda Gadda Gira Nayana Baha Nira for Bhagwan. That is okay. You know, our crying is for all the worldly things, on to that is so. Now, this Taha and Bhagwan saw so, that to remove that Dukkha, only one thing can remove Dukkha that they call it Mia. The reason is there is only one thing which is causing Dukkha. Dukkha is caused by Agnya. Mm -hmm. So if Dukkha is caused by Agnya, then the only way to remove the Dukkha is by Jnana yeah. only. So one Dini Jnana. And then what happens? How Hari Lini Maya? See, when we say Agnya, mm -hmm. the, the, the cosmic form of Agnya is called Maya. Mm -hmm. At the individual level, we need to call it Agnya. So at the highest level, call it Maya. And in Hindi, Maya has many meanings. In Hindi language. Maya means attachment, infatuation, all such things. Mm. So he gave that Jnana and removed all that. <clears throat> so then, immediate, immediately her sorrows went away. This all happens in two chapas, huh? but after. <laughs> but what is the gyan he gave? You know, this is the important thing. Which gyan? That will be given in the next line. Chiti jala pavak gagana samira panchara chit ati athama sariya pragata sotanu tava age soa my dear you're crying for Bali. Then he's crying to Tara. You're crying for Bali. I said, he, Bali, you're crying for Bali who has gone, or you're crying for Bali who's lying here? It means if you're crying for Bali who has gone, he's gone to my abode. He's fine. And if you're crying for this body, well, it is lying here. I mean, it's right in front of you, here. Yeah. So you're crying for this body or you're crying for that Bali? Not Tara also. What you'll say? Hmm. 
And this body, he says, is made up of five elements. Chitti, Jalo, Pava, Gagan, Samira. It is made up of earth, water, fire, air, and space. Space and air, given behind, yeah? So, if you are crying for the body, it is here. And of course, Bhagavan Shankara Chai writes in Bhajagu Vindam that uh, Tasmin Kaye Bhariyati Vibhyati. Bhariya Vibhyati means the wife also becomes scared of that body once the jiva has <clears throat> gone. Once that jiva has left, everybody becomes scared. We may think that we are not scared. Huh? But I tell you, after that cremation and everything is over and all, you come back home and then you see that spouse still sleeping on the bed, then you will know. <laughs> Become scared. So she, she, in this body, you need to these five elements. And the next line is, Tutsi Raji was also very much familiar with all of the writings of Bhagavan Shankaracharya. This type of line. What is that? Jeeva uh, Pancharachita Ati Adhama Sarira. The body is a despicable thing. He tells to that this body, this lying hair is very despicable means. You know how we are attached to this body. He said, there, what is that? Etan Maam Savasari Vikaram Manati Vichintaya Varam Varam. It's all flesh and fat and bone and blood and pus and bile and enzyme and teeth and hair and all that when it's all put together the one little fellow he had sandwich phobia sandwich phobia sandwich you know what you eat people have all type of phobia in this world he has sandwich phobia so the mother took him to some psychiatrist so the psychiatrist pulled out a slice of bread then he pulled out a slice of cheese. What is this? Cheese. And she put it there. Then he pulled out some slice of tomatoes. What is this? Tomatoes. Then he pulled out a lettuce. What is this? Lettuce. Huh. Mm. Then he pulled out another slice of bread. <laughs> what is this? Bread. Then he put it there. Ah, sandwich, and he ran out from that there. <laughs> so now, individually, says, this phobia has no rational. Eh? Individually, each one of the things, he's fine. But somehow, when it comes together there, that makes him scared. Well, the human being has a reverse of that thing. That is born from delusion only. A reverse delusion. I'll show you. So you take this body and you get some Ziploc bags. You tie a line from here to there. And you get some nice Ziploc bags. And you take all the hair from this body and you put in one bag. And you hang it here. Then all the teeth, another bag. <laughs> and all the flesh, another bag. And all the skin, another bag. And all the blood, another bag. All the pus, another bag. All bile, you know, enzyme, and nails. And you put it in like, and you walk down the line. Which one do you like? <laughs> yeah? We don't like anything. You take all of them and you put it back together. Wow, 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 without you, I can't live. It's a human being. So, individually, we like. And when nicely packaged, that is why packaging works so, so well, you know, in a company. Mm -hmm. Then they have studied Vedanta and right there. <laughs> They package that thing so nicely, only for the package you buy. 
So the human being cannot explain these type of things. Where, when all the things come together in the sandwich, he is miserable. Individually, he is scared of nothing. Inexplicable. This thing is called as delusion. And so this is why this body is called as Atham. The Atham word which is used here. And Bhagavan Shankara Shankara likes this word. Atham. Despicable this body because we don't like any part of it. So Bhagavan Shankara Shankara is body there. He has gone to my abode. Atham Sharira. Is there only. Pragata so tanutava age so va. Jeeva nitya. And the jeeva who is there, nitya has gone to my abode. And then he asked now to Tara. Actually, to a wise person, you can ask question. He asked to Tara. Tara, no? Kehi lagi tu marova. For whom are you crying? Now you explain to me. You're crying for this body? I said, he is there, that's it. Or you're crying for Bali? He's fine. Tell, who are you crying for? Now again, no answer. Upajagyan. Next word. How word for word every phrase. Upajag. The knowledge dawned on her. The knowledge dawning means see Tara has to be ready for this also. Okay, but one does not tell this to everybody in our mind. Isn't it? That's how wisdom is just there lying dormant. But one just has to. In our Trinidad, the uh, individual Jagawe that. He just has to what is that? evoke that knowledge, which is already there. Upajagnya, that knowledge dawned on Tara. Then Charan Tabalagi. She fell on Bhagwan's feet. I said, Oh, Prabhu, sorry. She fell on his feet. And Lini si Parama Bhagati Paramaki. No word about Bali or any such thing thereafter. Probably you give me supreme devotion. Forgot crying, forgot Bali, forgot everything. You give me supreme devotion. Like that. So this is uh, when any person is ready and that knowledge comes. It takes two lines. If it is person is not ready, Go on telling. Hmm? We are that type of uh, <clears throat> Tara was a fit. She was a dikari. Hmm? We are unfit. The guru goes on telling over and over. And then we don't learn. So now what I am told all. Uh, Lakshmana, Sugriva, you all go and do all whatever is required. You know, Sugriva will do the untasty sanskar, and Lakshmana will go and okay. could not go to that city. You know. But there is another line there I want to tell you. Now, see, this Ram Charit Manas is being told by four people simultaneously in four places simultaneously. Bhagwan Shiva is telling Ram Charit Manas to Parati Ji. While that is going on, Yagnya Valkya Maharaj is telling to Bharatwaji. While that is going on, Kaag Bhushundi is telling to Garut. And while that is going on, Tulsi Dasi is telling to all of us. Hmm? So four are telling at the same time, Ram Charit Manas. So now, after this episode, the Bhagavan gives this Nyan to Tara. And Tara realizes, oh, what am, what, what am I crying for? After Tara realizes that, Lord Shiva makes a comment to Parvati Ji. So that line, next line, that comment, very interesting. I want you to see it. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. 
I can tell you some more line now, see. A nice question will arise in your mind. This Ram Charit Manas has two types of lines. So there's a one type. Hmm? Listen to other type now. See this. <laughs> Only that will happen which is ordained and ordered by Bhagwan. Ram. Nothing else will happen. Why go on uh, deliberating or mentally, intellectually and arguing this and arguing that and logic and this. That only will happen which is ordained by Ram. So this verse, Ram makes all of us dance like a puppet. And that verse, that means what? That this type of verse is in Ram Charit Manas make it appear we have no freedom of choice rama determines everything for us already isn't it well, why are you going on weaving uh, long argument and uh, rational uh, rationalization and all such things bhagwan has already determined everything that will happen mm -hmm. now many viewers say but but family we that means we have no freedom of choice and Ram Charit Manas also it is appearing like that. Now listen to this is one type of verse, right? appearing as though we have no choice. Now see next type of verse. <laughs> Ram, 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 Ram,
he is a now throughout the Ramcharit Manas, you'll find these both type of verses. One type of verse, if you saw just now, which Bhagavan Ram makes all of us dance like puppet. Everything is in his hand. Now the second type, which I note and Kahuna ko suk data is coming ayutya kata. Nobody is the source of our joy or our sorrow. Our joy or sorrow is not caused by anybody else. How is God? Nijakrit karma bhog. It is done by me and it is my own karma. Now, this looks like I have freedom of choice. It is where my sorrow came from. Joy or sorrow. It is it Nijakrit means done by one, one self. Karma bho is the experience of the result of my own karma. And the next line, in this jagat, our jagat, karma prathan, karma preponderate, karma surpasses, karma is the preponderant law. Hmm? Karma prathan, biswakari raha, the Lord himself put it there. Karma. And what is karma? Jo jasa karai, so tasa phalu, Chaka means, as I saw, so I read. So if these type of verses, many of them are there, and many of the other types are there also. Now we say, what is this? It's true. See, Daji is giving two contradictory things now. Bhagwan is, see, in the first type of verse, Bhagwan is bringing my joy and sorrow for me. Because he is the one who is, uh, has me as a puppet. He is doing everything. And in the second type of verse, I did, and I got my own karma, I got the result, and I and I am suffering my own karma. So very, very clearly, the two types of verses are there. And, and when people who don't understand Sanatana Dharma, especially Western people, because Western religion is a different thing. So if you come with a Western goggles, and you look at Sanatana Dharma, you will say, well, something is wrong with that, isn't it? Because you yourself did not understand Sanatan Dharma. You come in with your goggles. Eh? One fellow put his cow to eat the uh, grass. That grass all dried. Which smart cow will eat dried grass? All brown looking color grass. And cow will not eat. Cow stood there. He went down the street. Bought a pair of Green shades <laughs> and put it on for the <laughs> Put it on the <laughs> He came and the cow ate. Anyway, that's just some story. But to tell, the idea is we see everything depending on the goggles we are. And a lot of this has happened. I brought up this thing because there are some important things that we have to remove from our mind. Hmm. See, the British government paid a fellow by the name of Max Mueller to send me to India and they gave him, you go and translate all of these scriptures, Sanskrit things. So he had to first learn Sanskrit and this and that, then go and start translating. But my dear, if you are coming from the West and all you know is Christian theology, when you see a Sanskrit word, you can only translate that on to the Christian theological word which you know. You have no other choice what you will translate. And that is how we ended up saying Brahma, Vishnu and Mahesh is the creator, the sustainer and the destroyer. Have you heard these words? So our unlearning process has is has to be so vast. Because in Sanatan Dharma, there is no such thing as creator, sustainer is okay, destroyer. Those are wrong English translations. And you tell. Hmm? I just give you a simple example why those words are not possible in Sanatan Dharma. You were there before? Mm -hmm. Before this birth, you were there? This is Sanatan Dharma. You were there before this birth, and you were there before that birth, and you were there. And, and how long I've been there? I've always been in Nitya Jeev. Here it is only told. Jeev is Nitya. He's eternal. So that means I have always been. Okay. And Jeev is Nitya. Then how Brahmaji created you? That is a Christian concept. 
Brahmaji, you are a creator. If I'm always there, then who created? Do you don't know have creator? There is no creator in Hinduism. What we have, Brahmaji brings, you see, Bhagavan Shri Krishna explained very nicely in Bhagavad Gita. Avyakta, Vyakta Sarva. How do you see this? From the Avyakta, everything becomes Vyakta. So, what is that? From the unmanifest, everything becomes manifest, stays for some time, and then again goes back into unmanifest. So, now it means to say that the thing is already there, everything in the universe is already there, coexisting, either in manifest form or unmanifest form. So if something is already there, how can you say it is created? It's not created. And Brahmaji is not creator. But you go from a Western culture, you have this only one word. When you say Srishtikar, you only have one word. So and you have to, in English, so what word you put? That word. Srishtikar is not creator. Brahmaji brings things from one state of unmanifest into a state of manifest. That is all. And Lord Shiva takes it back from state of unmanifest into, from manifest into? Manifest. You may say, yeah, dissolver. Because if you put sugar into water, you don't destroy the sugar. You dissolve the sugar, correct? Sugar is still there. So for Lord Shiva, you can say dissolver. Because destroy means wiped out. Jiva is not wiped out. Hmm. So we can say he is dissolver, but you want for Bhagwan Vishnu is okay, sustainer. And Brahmaji will actually, the proper translation, we have a manifest. He brings from on manifest to manifest things which are already yeah. there. Yeah. So those type of things that happen, and I'm telling that these things happen because the people who went and translated and who educated us for 200 years, they themselves did not know the proper meaning of those words. Srij is the Sanskrit tattoo for Srishti, Srishtikar. Brahmaji is Srishtikar in Sanskrit and Hindi, right? Srij is the tattoo. Srij, you know, the meaning of Srij means, right? It means to usher. Now, if somebody is outside, and you usher them inside, you did not create this person, isn't it? <laughs> you just brought them from there to here. And the water is in that tank. You put a hose and you usher the water from there to You did not create the water. So Brahmaji is ushering things from state of unmanifest into a state of manifest. That is a joy. Mm. So uh, this type of uh, teaching at all, um, um, I was created at some time, or Brahmaji created me and he created that and created the other. That creation word, we have to get rid of that word from our vocabulary and dictionary. You know. Now that is connected to this, I was telling. See, when they come and they read this thing, because they don't understand Sanatan Dharma, they say, look at this to Siddhaji, crazy. And all these people are reading that also, they're more crazy. Mm -hmm. Because one minute he's telling, Bhagwan has all of us like a puppet. And the same Tulsi Daji goes a few lines down the road. He's telling, whatever karma I do, I get all the wisdom. Everything is in my hand because I did the karma. So this, he, that writer is crazy. And all these followers, they are also crazy. Because you don't understand Sanatan Dharma. So that is why we have to spend time really understanding this thing. Huh? Now see, we say, if Tulsi Daji writes like this, we have all puppets in Bhagavan's hand. And then he writes like that. We have all freedom of karma. We create our own joys and our own sorrows. Is that thing contradictory? We say, no, I will explain to you how that is possible. It is not only you think it is contradictory. You're coming from a, a place where you think that is not possible. But Sanatan Dharma is ancient and the Rishis have deliberated deeply on all of these things. That is absolutely possible. Hmm? So now we have to see that. So the question which arises and which comes in the short form, everybody asks wherever we go from place to place. What is the question? The question is, Amiji, does Bhagwan determine everything or do we have freedom of choice? That is the question people ask all the time. Or is it 
uh, all prarabdha, or it is all purushartha. Those are the Sanskrit words which you know. Prarabdha and purushartha. So the two types of verses are coming here also, isn't it? I have freedom of choice or not? So now you please pay attention to this. Yeah. After today, this question should not be in your mind again. <laughs> I want to explain to you how the structure of the prakriti is. Because we don't usually think about the structure of prakriti. We just think about, I told you now, we see a nice object. Hey, both sundar hai. Kitna ml hai? How many milliliters are there? You start inquiring about Kase Mila. Kya da meshka. Those we quickly we do those things. But nature of prakriti and all that, we don't do any deep reflection or thinking or any such thing. Huh? No see. First thing about prakriti. Then I'll give you some example and you will figure out this prakriti. Huh? Am I tall or short? Well, <laughs> when I stand in front of my mother, I am tall actually. <laughs> yeah. But if I stand in front of a basketball player, <laughs> you know, in West Indies team, we had uh, these fast bowlers. Huh? Joel Garner, have you heard that name? Oh, yeah. I, one day I was standing in airport and I was behind him. With <laughs> <laughs> Indian immigration. So I don't know how my suitcase touched him. How are you? Oh, and he turned around. And he did like that. And he did like that. And when I looked up, I said, I know you from somewhere. He said, I am Joel Garner. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I knew I knew him from somewhere, I could not tell that. But see, in front of him, I'm midget, isn't it? So now, if you have to say, I'm tall or short, that in this, and that's why Einstein told you, we're living in a relative world, correct or not? Mm -hmm. yeah? Relative, the other meaning of relative is this. I'm talking to you about property. Yeah? The other meaning of relative is one thing is two contradictory things at the same time because tall is contradictory to short mm -hmm. but i am tall and short at one and the same time that is the meaning of relative and and, and um, when we start thinking about that word but this is the way the property is whole property you think contradictory things are not um, cannot coexist in one and the same thing but they can that is why an atom has a positive and a negative <laughs> Contradictory things are they exist, coexist at one and the same time and one and the same thing. You can you can come with a hundred examples. See, hundred degrees water, boiling water, is hot or cold? Hundred degrees boiling water is hot, you can touch it. So you take a pot of water boiling hundred degrees and you go down by the steel mill there. They are boiling steel at 2300 degrees Celsius. Huh? So you ask that boiling steam, hey, what do you think about this boiling water? Is it hot or cold? Well, that fellow will say he's experiencing winter. <laughs> because 2300 degrees and he's only 100 degrees. So the same water which you consider hot, when you put it juxtaposed against that boiling steam, this becomes cold. So now water is both hot and cold. It means depends on where you are looking from. Mm. Correct? It's where you're looking from. And this brings another big question in Sanatana. It's all about perspective, really. Really, it is all about perspective. And from, from one perspective, it looks like this, and from another perspective, it looks like that. And therefore, it has to be both at one and the same time and everything is like this in prakriti yeah? we, and you may think contradictory things cannot coexist they do I, i'll show you a simple example can you travel north and south at the same time 
you can you think it is contradictory you can travel north and south at the same time you go on Rajthani Express from Mumbai to Delhi, you're traveling in which direction? North. And you're on that train and you're walking towards the back of the train. <laughs> <laughs> which direction are you traveling in? <laughs> so you're on that fast moving train going towards the north, but you are, so which direction are you walking? <laughs> South. <laughs> So you're going north or south now? <laughs> you're going to north and south at the same? See, the prakriti is structured like this. Contradictory things exist, coexist. So this is the explanation. We have Pravda or Purushata, both exist at one and the same time. That this thought is not there in Western thoughts. And so if you come and you see something like this, if you come from the West and you see something like this, you will say all these people are crazy. But this thinking is absent in the West. Either you go to hell or you go to heaven. And where hell is there, hell is there. Where heaven is there, heaven is there. The two never. No, we say you have sukha and dukkha at one and the same. Time, the same person and the same thing that could be sukha can also be so i told you last night mm -hmm. huh? Laddu is sukha, eat na. let's see <laughs> how many you leave the same laddu which brings sukha sukha will bring mm -hmm. so now that let me give you an example of how the best example you may not have thought about it how this prarabdha and purusharta coexist and both are true at one and the same time. time. Arjuna tells, Prabhu, I don't want to fight this. Visrija Sasharam Chal, Shoka Sambit Namasam, Udam Bonaru, I don't want to fight. So one has no has to. Give him proper knowledge and this and that and, and make him fight. But before that happens, 18 chapter ha goes on. 18 chapters happen. In the 11th chapter, war is not yet started. Eh? Because Gita is given before the war. In the 11th chapter, Bhagavan gives Virat Rup Darshan to Arjuna. And in that Virat Rup Darshan, he, Arjuna sees that Bhagwan is devouring all these Kauravas. They are stuck between his teeth and everything. He, <coughs> so in that Viratu Darshan, Bhagwan has already slain all of these huh? Kauravas. They are dead. So Arjuna is standing in the present moment. War has not yet happened, but they, all, they are already dead. So when Arjuna sees them all dead, they're like, oh, 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 you kill them? Oh, very good. Then no, I don't have to kill them. <laughs> He's happy now. Yeah. Bhagavan already killed all of them. So Arjuna said, Prabhu, oh, this good thing. You have already killed. Now my job is over. Bhagavan asked Arjuna, so they are all dead. Yeah, yes, I saw with my own eyes. Uh, Bhagavan said, no, no, think again. With whose eyes did you see? Divyam dadami te chakchuhu. Divyam dadami te chakchuhu means Bhagavan gave divine eyes. Bhagavan, divine eyes is Bhagavan's eyes. Isn't it? So with whose eyes did you see Kauravas there? Sorry, Prabhu, your eyes. Hmm? With divine eyes. I said, now you give me back. <laughs> now you give back those eyes. Hmm? But one took it. I said, uh, now, see, yeah. Deko. Look on the other side. Korovas are there or not? Oh, yes, Prabhu, they're there. So, from Bhagwan's eye standpoint, 
they all there from arjuna's eye standpoint they all alive so no are they dead or alive <laughs> but they are alive at the same time it depends on the perspective isn't it so the next question arises from whose perspective are you supposed to act so what is bhagwan teaching to arjuna Arjuna cannot act from Bhagwan's perspective. He has to act from his perspective. his perspective. So from your perspective, you have freedom of choice or not? That first, so you have to act from your perspective. You see how, how easy this thing is. Huh? From my perspective, I have freedom of choice. I freely came here today. But you felt now that you freely came here. So from our perspective, we have freedom of choice. And the, otherwise, all these scriptures and Shastra and teaching and Shiksha and Guru and all make no, no sense. From my perspective, I have freedom of choice. I will use that to do some Punya, Karma. I will use that to follow the path of Dharma, use that to acquire Jnana, use that to gain Mukti. And then mukti also doesn't make no sense. Then if I have no freedom of choice, why strive for mukti? I'll just sit there, wait. For what? And I'm just waiting. That also I have no freedom of choice to wait. <laughs> so Arjuna has to act from his standpoint, and all of us have to act from our standpoint. From Bhagwan's standpoint, we are all like putli, like a puppet. Huh? But from our standpoint, we have freedom of yes. choice. Uh, and the two standpoints coexist at one and the same time. And I tell you, for those of you who are interested in these type of things, you study now, physics is going to prove this pretty soon, if not already. The two things, past, present, and future exist at one and the same time. Though they seem contradictory, they exist at one and the same time. Okay, so this is when we see this type of line, don't let somebody from outside come to your scripture. The people are crazy. We have a logical, rational, actually, a, an explanation that will be borne out by modern physics also. Hmm? The two things coexist. Man, the two types of lines are there throughout the Ramcharit Manas from beginning to end. Lines where it says we are just a puppet, lines where it says we are, we have freedom of choice. Both are there. Okay. Now, I think this is a very nice. Bhagavan Shiva telling to Parthiji, all of us are like puppets in the hands of Ram. And we have dealt with this one time in old Ram. A okay, nice place to stop. I can't finish any more of the Ram Chadis Manata. This is uh, Kishkinda. I can't. So next time when I come, maybe we will. <laughs> we will uh, see how much more we can. I have given some dates. I don't know if you all are okay with those dates. We'll see next time. After Toronto, I'll come in. But before that, you can come to Trinidad. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, number of things. One is. <laughs> In Uttarakhand, Tulsi Dharaji writes a nice thing. He uses the word dhanya nine times consecutively. Dhanya. Dhanya means blessed, hmm? wonderful, great, fortunate. Dhanya. And in one of the nine, you can go and see uh, down at the end of, I don't remember number and all number. Tutsiraji talks about wealth. Hmm? So dhana dhanya prathama gati jake. What he means to say, he explains that, eh? that wealth has three gati. It means wealth has three uh, destiny, possible destiny. So the first destiny of wealth is wealth 
can be given as than. Because he says prathamagati. Pratham means first. It can be given as than. Second gati of wealth. Don't give any than. We take the wealth and we go to Vegas and everywhere and enjoy like an idiot. Wherever. The second gati means hope. Second gati of wealth is hope. And last gati of wealth in this uh, dharma that they call it nash means all lost i did some wrong thing some foolish thing something and all the wealth so in sanatan dharma that this um, dhana has team gati but tulsidaji telling in that line so dhana dhanya that wealth is blessed so Pratamagati Jaki means that well which has which has been uh, used for which uh the first gati. That well which has been given as dan. That is blessed well, actually. And if you really study this topic, you will see that it's absolutely true. Really. Yeah. Suppose I have ten dollars and I give it to some person who is uh, doing charity work of making, you know, feeding the poor, whatever. The ten dollars will be spread, and so many people will get benefit. Like now, how all of you are giving money to build an ashram, and in 10, 15 years, all of us will be gone. Twenty years, whatever number of years, will be gone. But then, the wealth which you gave, that wealth will uh, bring benefit for generation after generation after generation, right? So that is the the dani gati, dan. Ajat sikhe. Suppose I take that wealth and I use it for bhog gati. I go and enjoy this here, there, and everything. Now you know, jaha pe bhog hai, pretty soon, uske piche rog Turat, correct or not? Huh? It's true. Body rog and also mind rog. Because it leads to more attachment and more, you know, like that. Oh, when I enjoy this thing once, I want to go there two times, and I be there, and I want to, I want to go there, and, and then that attachment. So any bhog, that is used for bhog, this is the result. Then, Nash, well, that will bring, you'll go pagal also. Oh, I used to have so much money. And I lost it. And then you blame everybody, and this, and that, and that. That it brought no no use to it brought no benefit to that person. So Tulsi Daji uh, talks about this topic way down the Uttar Khand. When we get there, we'll see that thing. Yeah, but I'm just telling you that this line. So that person also, he can have all three, he can have one, but the best gati of Dhan really is Dhan. Dhanan, Dhan. And it brings benefit, immense benefit to the giver. And also to those who get the dance. So now you have this opportunity, all of you, such a noble thought, noble um, project you have come up with. And it then can be used for Pratham Gati. Pratham Gati. And that will bring immense benefit to you and all society. Eh? So you think about that and think about the purpose of Than and all of that sort of thing. This Tanatan Dharma does not treat any topic lightly. We really go deep into all topics like that. Okay, you're doing superbly well here, I think. So far, you've done fantastic. And you see here, did not big communities like Toronto and New York and such big population of and for a small city. You've done exceptionally well. And so my hearty congratulations to all of you. And I think you're going along a really nice path. Uh, just remain a selfless sevaks and all. That's the best we can do. Remain a selfless sevaks. Everything will be fine. All right. Now, um, we will have the vote of thanks. Mm -hmm. And there will be a vote of thanks. Okay. Please. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs>
Hari Om. Hari Om. Thank you so much, Swamiji. And uh, it has been a really, really wonderful three days or three and a half days for some people. But it has gone as if, like, I mean, uh, it's not even three days. So, so wonderful. Thank you for coming. And then also considering to come every year. <laughs> So Swamiji said, okay, he'll be coming around October, November every year. <laughs> so this program is only made possible by all the volunteers who help us in variety of ways. Just want to call out a few people. First is Ratibai ji and Ajay ji for our tabla support. And Renuka Ji, Prashant Ji for hosting Tommy Ji. All Biksha volunteers. Our RP sponsors. And this is a very big news that we want to share with you. After yesterday, talking about the project, Rupa Ji and Sudhakar Ji, you guys know, they have came forward to co-sign the lease. Wow. So we need two more people. So once we get the two more people and then we want to go back to the bank again and then get approval. Once that is done, probably we will have a groundbreaking within a month or two. Wow. So this is really the last step, as Grish Ji told yesterday. I know it feels risky, but talk to us. I think like I mean we have ways which is made it possible. All the people who are really co-signing are promising ourselves or each other to make sure that okay, we will be equally responsible. And then we will go together to make the center happen. And then lastly, our Sanatana Dharma, because if you have observed, Chinma Mission never charges anything for discourses. And in fact, I think there are a lot of people, I just wanted to mention, nobody even gets paid anything. I can talk about so many things. We don't even have a janitor help. So all the volunteers who really come here to clean the house or to clean the room. So if they are coming every Sunday and the bathroom is clean, some of us are really coming the day before or few hours before or even cleaning after that. So the reason why I want to point that out is we take every dollar you give us very, very seriously. That is very, very important. And if you go on research, there will be very few organizations where they do not have administrative support. Mm -hmm. And Chinmay Mission is one where we have zero administration cost. Every dollar we get, we try to really give it back to the society. Mm -hmm. And then a couple of more things. I want to call out Mahesh Bhai and Hansa Ji. So it's like I know we were talking about Hanuman. <laughs> we uh, fondly call him Hanuman of Chinman Shri Paramjana. So I think like I mentioned Swamiji yesterday, you gave a good example of Hanuman Ji always bring happiness. I think Mahesh, Mahesh Ji always bring happiness to even two-year-old to 60-year-old. Thank you. So now I want to invite or call upon Renuka Ji and Prashant Ji to come and offer our Guru Dakshina on behalf of Inma Mission to Swami Ji. And then after that, you can come as our, we, we're going to wait for Arpi, right? No, after after Arpi.
After the RP done, the guests can come as a family and then take uh, Swamiji's blessing and then take uh, take the prasad as well.
स्वामी विद्या सब संतन की श्री सत्य सनातन धर्म की जय नम पार्वती पते 